In this video, I will show you how you can use Awingu as a proxy server in front of your internal web apps. So um, first of all, uh, let me uh, show you. Um, this is uh, an internal website, intranet.com.local. It's, for example, also not on a standard uh, web port. So I can, uh, I can access this, uh, this application internally from my uh, organization. But if I, if I want to connect from outside, so if I connect from that uh, outside, you will see that this is uh, not, uh, not working. Um, what I can do in Awingu is make this application uh, behind uh, Awingu available. So in this case, it's not an RDP application or a full desktop that I'm going to start, but it's actually a website that I'm going to proxy through uh, Awingu with all the associated features to it. So I can, for example, only make it available to specific security groups, to specific users. I can uh, add multi-factor uh, authentication on that. And I can tunnel everything through the same uh, web uh, stream. To do this, uh, what I need to do is again, uh, log in as an admin in Awingu, go to the system settings, go to manage uh, applications. And then if you click on add, eh, we already discussed in previous videos, the desktop, the RDP application and the remote applications. You will see that there are two web related uh, applications we can uh, add. One of them is a web application. So this is just like a bookmark to a public uh, website. But if I would like to make an internal website available through uh, Awingu, I have to go for the reverse proxy web uh, application. So in, uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to call this the, the intranet. Um, again, I can uh, take an icon if I, if I want to. Um, but um, the most important things are the, are the two steps below. Uh, the first thing Awingu will ask is the destination URL. So in uh, my case, this is uh, intranet.comp.local uh, on uh, port uh, 82. And Awingu will ask for a source host header. So um, to have remote uh, reverse proxy apps available from uh, remote in Awingu, what we need to do is add an extra host header to the uh, Awingu configuration. So this is something I have already done uh, up front. So uh, if you, as you can see, if I do a lookup of uh, remote uh, awingu.com, uh, it's pointing to this uh, public IP address. If, uh, if I do the same thing for webapp.awingu.com, uh, you see it points to the exactly same uh, IP address. So this is something I need to do up front. I need to create a second uh, DNS name for my uh, Awingu appliance. And once this is done, I can then specify that uh, behind this webapp.awingu.com uh, is my uh, intranet uh, configured. So actually, whenever you go to webappawingu.com, Awingu will automatically redirect you to the internal website called intranet.com.local port 82 in uh, my case. Again, I have to specify uh, for which user, so I'm going to make the intranet available for everyone, and it's asking for the uh, context also. There are some uh, more uh, advanced settings. So, for example, um, if you connect over IP and, and you want to specify a specific host header to the to the local server, that's something you can specify. But in my case, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use just a simple DNS. I can rewrite content or not. So by default, it's on, but uh, this is also something you can uh, enable. And there is also a possibility to do single sign-on to your uh, web application. So um, there is the possibility to use basic auth. So whenever you log into a website, Awingu will use the same username and password uh, as provided um, during the login to, to log into these uh, applications. There is also the possibility to work with uh, something which is called remote user. That's um, some applications support that, that if you have a remote user specified that uh, it automatically assumes that there has already been done an uh, authentication. Both for the, um, for the single sign-on based on basic auto remote user, uh, we can specify if you want to use the username, the domain username, or the UPN. So these are some settings we, we can specify. Uh, it's important to, to also note that um, um, this will not work with NTLM-based uh, applications. So if you have applications which are typically hosted on an IIS web server, uh, they very often use Windows-based authentication or also known as uh, NTLM authentication. Uh, this is something that cannot be proxied. So NTLM is not something you can easily proxy over, an, over, an, um, over a reverse proxy. So if you have these kinds of internal IIS-based applications with Windows-based or NTLM-based authentication, you have to make them available maybe on another host header, uh, but then with, with plain authentication or, or um, form-based authentication. If that is the case, we can proxy them through, uh, through a Wingo. If it's pure NTLM, it will, it, will not, uh, it will not work. So what I have done now is I have published the, uh, the application. 
Uh, one thing I still need to do is uh, add a certificate for it. So remember in one of the previous videos, we have configured Awingu to only accept connections over HTTPS. We have added an extra DNS name to the Awingu appliance, the intranet. Uh, um, sorry, the web app. Uh, dot Awingu. Dot, uh, dot, uh, dot com. So what we need to do is uh, go to global um, uh, cert um, global certificates and also add a certificate for um, this uh, this domain. So web app. Uh, awingu.com. Uh, of course, if you have already uploaded like a, an, um, a wildcard certificate for this domain, that, that's not, uh, not needed. But as I'm adding an extra DNS name, um, I need to uh, also configure this on the, on the, on the certificate uh, side. A last thing to double check uh, before we, we're going to try this is um, um, Awingu also needs to know what the, um, uh, the master uh, DNS name of the appliance is. Um, if in your settings, if you go to global domains and you have done your configuration correct, so you have already specified it over here that the, the host header for the Awingo appliance itself is remoteawingo.com, this will be pre-filled in correct. So in the user connector, you will see that the, the default um, logon host header for a reverse proxy is already set to uh, remote.awingo.com. So if this is the case, it's already fine. If not, please uh, specify it uh, in, uh, in here. So now let's give it a, a try. So if I log out and I log back in, I should have my uh, intranet uh, visible. So log out, log in. I should have my intranet available. And if I click on it, uh, as you can see, I have uh, access to my uh, to my uh, intranet. The, the last thing I want to just show you is the, the fifth option in Awingu. So uh, as I said before, we can also make web links to public websites. So uh, this is even more simple. So if I go to manage applications, click on uh, web applications, I can just add a, a link. So for example, uh, I could say uh, the Awingu uh, technical videos. Videos. Um, so these uh, are available on YouTube. So let me just pick a YouTube uh, icon in here. Uh, to make it a little bit visual, okay. So YouTube icon, and then I can specify a public URL like you, HTTPS um, awingu.com slash technical videos. Again, I can specify for who, so let's make it again available for everyone. If I click on add, I have uh, also now my uh, YouTube uh, link. So if I log out and I log back in, you will see that next to the intranet, there is also now the, the YouTube available. If I click on that, this is not a reverse proxy to web app. This is a, is a plain uh, web application. So as you can see, with a single click, I can also open uh, public websites.